Donald Trump is on track, I think, to win this election uh, and maybe win it by a landslide and take with him the Senate and the House. And so for me, this isn't a question about polling. It's not a question about politics. Uh, it's a moral question about the future of our country. And I think it's critically important for us to come to grips with what we face if together we put this country on the path of electing Donald Trump again. But I have not seen anything remotely approaching the kind of um, uh, uh, plan we need to see out of the White House that can demonstrate that he can actually beat Donald Trump. Right now, we're on a path to losing. And when your strategy isn't working, you can't just double down on the strategy. You have to change your strategy. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to, to make that decision uh, because time is running short. He has said firmly this week, he is going to run. Do you want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. I have complete confidence that Joe Biden will do the patriotic thing for the country. And he's going to make that decision. He's never disappointed me. Yeah, this is all a matter of risk assessment. There's risk associated with everything. The question is whether the risk of the status quo eclipses the risk of trying uh, something else. And I think we've reached the point where many are, are have come to that conclusion. Those clips you just watched makes it pretty clear that the conversation about whether or not Joe Biden should drop out isn't anywhere near over. And this is kind of the door reopening to that conversation again. Those individuals, they're making it clear that this isn't a settled matter to the chagrin of Joe Biden. But prior to them saying that, it seemed like this really was a settled issue. And I say this because, you know, as of Monday evening, even though there wasn't really a consensus among House Democrats about what he should do, it did seem like enough electeds had rallied around him publicly to get everyone else to acquiesce. Now, on top of that, Biden just chose to dig his heels in. And as Benji Sarlow of Semaphore put it, he threatened his detractors with mutually assured destruction. You know, he made it clear that he wasn't going to leave. And anyone still challenging him to drop out at that point, they're only hurting themselves because in the event he does lose, they would be blamed for undermining him. And that's a really fucked up position to put your own party in. But if we've learned anything from this process, it's that Biden has made it very clear that he doesn't care about anything but his own power. And he's willing to burn down his entire party and country all to hang on to that power. So the combination of him digging his heels in and Democrats publicly rallying to support him kind of discouraged the ones who were thinking about being brave. So by Monday evening, it just seemed like the matter was settled, as AOC put it. He made clear then, and he has made clear since, that he is in this race. The matter is closed. He had reiterated that this morning. He has reiterated that to the public. Joe Biden is our nominee. He is not leaving this race. He is in this race and I support him. Seeing that was really depressing because it just made it seem like, you know, this conversation that was giving some of us hope that things could change for the better and we could still defeat Trump was over. But what she said there, despicable. You know, what she's saying essentially is that he's staying in the race and that's that. The matter is settled. So we all have to shut the fuck up now and get in line and stop questioning him. But it doesn't work that way, AOC. You don't get to gatekeep our concerns about his viability in November. The polls show that he is losing, not just nationally, but in battleground states. So you don't get to silence everyone else in the Democratic Party who actually cares about winning. Biden isn't a fucking king. He's a narcissistic prick who's putting himself before the country. Now, AOC might be fine with that, but I'm not. But people like her who are defending him publicly for their own self-interested reasons, they're trying to tell 75% of registered voters who think that Democrats would have a better chance with someone else that the matter is closed. Sorry, it's not over. You can't just sweep this under the rug. You can't put the cat back in the bag. But I think that AOC really is a microcosm of a broader issue. Elected Democrats, they feel the way that we feel, but the problem is they don't have the spine to say what we're saying publicly. As Natasha Karecki of NBC News reports, quote, by some accounts, the election feels more akin to a death march to November than a rousing backing for a party nominee. Quote, I wish I was more brave, said one Democratic state party chair who thinks Biden should step aside. They add, I would be crucified by them if I spoke out of line. Pathetic, just 
pathetic. And I think that that right there is emblematic of a bigger problem with the Democratic Party, right? They just don't want to put their necks on the line, even though they know that the only chance we have of beating Trump in November is for Biden to step the fuck aside. And those that already put their necks on the line, like Jerry Nadler, they reversed course since Biden is digging in and you don't want to be on the bad side of the Democratic Party's leadership and of the potential president if he does win. So it's easier to just kind of like give in and support him or be quiet, or you can try to ride the fence like Pramila Jayapal did. Are you fully behind the president? Um, I am fully behind him as our nominee until he's not our nominee. I swear to God, I cannot fucking deal with Democrats. I just... <laughs> it feels like we're watching a parody, but this is real life. Listen, I understand that there's a risk involved with any decision that Democrats make, but Joe Biden is headed for near certain defeat. He's lost the trust of voters and Republicans haven't even begun to capitalize on this issue yet, but they will. In fact, Politico reports that Republicans are planning to spend $61 million on Biden attack ads in Rust Belt states during the Summer Olympics. And what do you think they're going to focus on? Not just his age, but the fact that Democrats have been lying about his cognitive abilities. Now, odds are things aren't going to get better after they start really digging in and attacking him. So if he's already doing bad, imagine how much worse it's going to get once Republicans start to attack him. Right now, they're just sitting back and they're being quiet. Trump hasn't said much because they're just watching Democrats implode. They're watching Biden attack his own party. So, you know, at this point, the hole that Biden has dug for himself is so deep that it seems like the only way to get out of this, the only chance that they have is to go with someone else. And to say that the hole that Biden dug for himself is deep, that's really an understatement because there's now a concern that New York is in play. Literally, Politico reports that Democrats in New York are concerned that the state is now a toss-up due to a couple of polls that showed that Trump was statistically tied with Joe Biden. Now, you're talking about New York, a state that Biden won by 23 points last time. Now, I don't think that New York is going to turn red, but it does show you that he has slipped. These polls are indicating that he's so far behind that even in Democratic strongholds, he's slipping. Now, he could lose in New York. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. I think those two polls in particular are outliers. But when you look at his win and the margin of victory in 2022 with the Republican versus Democrat gubernatorial race, it was a lot closer. So, Anything is possible in these times, and it just feels so irresponsible to keep heading down this path when every indication that we have, every data point we have shows that Biden is going to lose to Donald Trump, right? The prospect of him recovering, it's still possible, but it's virtually insurmountable because we have four months left. And to be clear, this isn't just about Biden versus Trump. It's also about down ticket Democrats who are desperately trying to hold on to their seats. It's about Democrats not letting Republicans take control of the Senate. So that way, in the event, there's an opening on the Supreme Court. If Biden does happen to win, he's able to name a replacement and not have to deal with obstruction from the next Republican leader. But here's the thing. It's not going well for Democrats when it comes to Congress as well. And part of the problem is Joe Biden. Now, CNN analyst Harry Enten is going to explain how bad it is. Look at this. CNN poll, plus two Republican. Wall Street Journal poll, plus three Republican. Monmouth University poll, plus three Republican. Yeah, Joe Biden may be in slightly worse shape in these particular polls, but the fact is when Biden's down four, five, six points in these polls, you can only run so far ahead of Joe Biden at this particular point, at least in the race for the House. It does seem like Republicans are ahead because Donald Trump is so far ahead. What's the Senate landscape? Yeah, what's the Senate landscape? I mean, take a look here. GOP needs just a gain of one for control if Trump wins. And their path is extremely clear because their best chance for a pickup opportunity is in West Virginia. That's a very likely GOP win with, G with Joe Manchin retiring. And the best Dem pickup chance, perhaps to reverse that so the GOP doesn't gain a net gain of at least one, is Texas. But that's still a likely GOP win. So the fact is, if Donald Trump wins this election, the race for the Senate, for all intents and purposes in my mind, is over. One of the things I have heard from Democrats running for Congress is, OK, if President Biden's not doing well, what we'll say is it makes it all that much more important to elect a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. Maybe they can gain support that way. But does it work like that, split tickets anymore? It, it really doesn't. Let's go back since 2000. Same party won presidency and Congress. Yes, five times. 
No was just one time in 2012 that the House that year, but the House popular vote that year actually went Democratic, even though Republicans maintain control of the House. So the fact is, five out of six times, that's not good math. And let's just take a look at the Senate here. Senate and presidential races in 2016 and 2020. States that voted the same way in both, 68. States that voted for a different party, just one. That was Maine back in 2020. The fact is, straight ticket voting is the way of the land this, these days. The idea that Democrats down ballot could somehow outrun Joe Biden to such a great extent to win control in the House or maintain control in the Senate, that seems to me to be an unlikely proposition. So we're seriously facing the prospect of not only a Trump landslide, but both chambers of Congress being controlled by Republicans. That would be catastrophic, catastrophic. Now, when you bring up the polls that show that this is a likely scenario, you have a lot of Biden diehards just denying the polls. Like if you go back and look at some of the comments on my videos or any of the comments to pollsters who are sharing these polls or the analysts who are sharing these concerns, you see Biden supporters saying, you still trust the polls, LOL. Polls are fake news. And it's so frustrating because you can't turn into a Republican functionally and start denying reality so that way you feel better. Like you have to fight through the cognitive dissonance because I thought the Democrats were supposed to be the party that cared about data and evidence. But all of a sudden, polls are fake news because it makes us feel better to deny the polls. And part of the problem is that, you know, a lot of Democrats take cues from Joe Biden, who's also denying the polls. But we shouldn't have another fucking cult of personality. One cult is bad enough. Don't turn Biden's support base into a cult. Like you, you all, you can use critical thinking skills and question things. I, I just, it's so frustrating. Now, listen, as far as I'm concerned, there's two options. You can replace Biden and give Democrats a chance of retaining the White House. It's not a sure bet that somebody who replaces Biden would win, but I think you get a better chance. Or you can choose to roll the dice with Joe Biden. But if you do that, you actually have to come up with a plan to turn this around. But that would require him being active, running a vigorous campaign, holding town halls, press conferences, doing lengthy unscripted interviews where he's not feeding questions to the hosts. But instead, Biden is reportedly doing the opposite. He's choosing to stay in and he's not doing all of that to assuage concerns. Brian Metzger of Business Insider reports, quote, one House Democrat, a Biden ally, told me they think the White House and campaign will limit the president after this week. I think he'll survive to the convention if he just limits himself at this point. This is obviously not what many other Democratic lawmakers are calling for. So at this point in time, they're just trying to wait out the clock. You know, hide him away until it's too late, until he's officially the nominee and the Democrats will have to shut the fuck up. But if that happens and he actually does win and survives calls from his own party to drop out, then what? Then you're in a general election officially against Donald Trump. What are you going to do then? You're going to hide him away again to minimize senior moments in hopes that Americans will just forget that he's in cognitive decline? It's just such a maddening situation and the Democrats rallying around him at this point, they're setting all of us up for disaster. So as of Monday, a lot of people felt frustrated, myself included, knowing that he's probably not going to drop out. And, you know, that basically makes a Trump victory very, very likely. It's not a certainty, but it's very likely. I'd say his chances are 70-30, right? With Trump having the 70% chance and Biden having the 30% chance. You know, that's not insignificant. He could still win, but, you know, when democracy really is on the line, that feels like such a huge gamble. But this conversation, once again, is opening back up. Doesn't mean that he's going to drop out, but individuals like Michael Bennett and Nancy Pelosi and even George Clooney, they are presenting Democrats in Congress with another opportunity to do the right thing and speak up. Now, as you saw in the first clip that we played, Nancy Pelosi didn't acknowledge the fact that Biden already said he's staying in the race, even though, you know, she's now downplaying her words. Uh, and she's also saying that her words are being misconstrued. But the message that she put out there has been received loud and clear to some Democrats who think that she's now purposefully giving them another chance to actually speak up. Furthermore, there's Tim Kaine. You know, his comments about Biden were interesting. You know, he didn't want to seem like he was committed either way, but he said that he's confident Biden would do the patriotic thing. Now, I don't know what that means aside from, well, he's going to do the patriotic thing and sacrifice his own campaign for the greater good of the country, right? That's what 
I would at least assume he's trying to say, because I don't think it'd be patriotic to stay in and lose Donald Trump. Right now, another major thing that has also changed that reopened this conversation is George Clooney's op ed. And that sounds really bizarre to think that an op ed from a celebrity in The New York Times can change things. But George Clooney, of all celebrities, is very significant because he's not just an actor. He is a prolific fundraiser for Democrats and just hosted a fundraiser with Joe Biden where he raised $14 million, I believe. Now, what he says in particular in this op-ed, that right there is catastrophic for Biden. So he explains how much he loves Joe Biden, but he points out that he just can't win the fight against time and adds, it's devastating to say, but the Joe Biden I was with three weeks ago at the fundraiser was not the Joe big effing deal Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. He was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. Was he tired? Yes. A cold? Maybe. But our party leaders need to stop telling us that 51 million people didn't see what we just saw. We're all so terrified by the prospect of a second Trump term that we've opted to ignore every warning sign. The George Stephanopoulos interview only reinforced what we saw the week before. As Democrats, we collectively hold our breath or turn down the volume whenever we see the president, whom we respect, walk off Air Force One or walk back to a mic to answer an unscripted question. Is it fair to point these things out? It has to be. This is about age, nothing more, but also nothing that can be reversed. We are not going to win in November with this president. On top of that, we won't win the House and we're going to lose the Senate. This isn't only my opinion. This is the opinion of every senator and congress member and governor who i've spoken with in private every single one irrespective of what he or she is saying publicly it is disingenuous at best to argue that democrats have already spoken with their vote and therefore the nomination is settled and done when we just received new and upsetting information so this is significant for a couple of reasons first and foremost what he's saying here is an indictment on every democrat remaining silent because he's saying Look, I'm a Democratic fundraiser. I raise money for these people, and they're all telling me privately that Biden needs to step down, but they don't want to say that publicly. In other words, they're lying. Now, he goes on to say that Democratic leadership should call on him to drop out and simply says that the DNC should get, give other Democrats an option, let them make their case at the convention. Now, he also acknowledges that replacing Biden is risky. I don't think anybody is downplaying that fact. Of course, it's risky. But that individual has the opportunity to turn things around, whereas Biden almost certainly does not, right? If you nominate somebody who is younger, well, they could make the case better. They could rejuvenate the party if they're young and they have a vision. You know, they could face plan too. That's also possible. But there's so much at stake to do nothing in the face of almost certain defeat. And Clooney is essentially making that argument. Now, the second reason why Clooney's op-ed is important is because he's not just daring Democrats to grow spines. He's also answering the question of whether or not Biden's debate performance was a one-off. And he says the answer is obviously no. You know, we've been in positions with family members who have been in that predicament. We've seen it before. Now, Clooney said that, but John Favreau of Pod, Pod Save America, who was also at that same fundraiser for Biden, confirmed what Clooney said on CNN. Yes, it was bad. Uh, I was there. It, Clooney was exactly right. And every single person I talked to at the fundraiser thought the same thing, except for the you know, people working for Joe Biden, or at least they didn't say that. But I remember my wife, Emily, turned to me after the fundraiser and said, what are we going to do? I mean, and I said, mm -hmm. well, there's a debate in a week, either he'll do well in the debate and we'll think well he was just tired because he flew all the way back from europe and that'll be that or he'll be like this at the debate and then the whole country will be talking about it and so here we are yeah now it's not like we needed the confirmation because i think that what george clooney is saying is pretty fucking obvious if you have eyes and ears but it's just nice to see people like john who i typically disagree with speak out for the greater good, even though he's losing support from Democratic diehards who are riding with Biden. You know, they're ride or die for Biden, literally at this point. But, you know, just when you thought that the Biden team couldn't possibly humiliate themselves anymore, well, they actually chose to respond to George Clooney's op-ed and try to address concerns about, you know, Joe Biden's performance at that fundraiser in particular. And what they say is fucking so outrageous. A campaign official who attended that Los Angeles fundraiser tells me that George Clooney left three hours before the president. So clearly the gloves are off, Jake. What, but what does that mean that George Clooney left three hours? What's, what's the point? The point of that is to suggest that 
Biden's stamina is better than Clooney's, and Clooney didn't have, you know, eyes on the entire event. That's the response uh, to uh, to the Clooney op-ed. Okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Very believable to think that Biden has more stamina than George Clooney. Cool. See, part of the problem is every time they try to defend themselves, they end up looking worse, which is why they probably do want to hide Biden away. You know, he ends up looking more dishonest and unhinged and Trumpian. Like as he digs his heels in, he looks like a bigger asshole because it's clear the people speaking out, they don't want to speak out. They don't want to put their necks on the line. I believe that Michael Bennett, even though I have political disagreements with him, doesn't want to be saying this. But he's saying it because he cares more about winning than Biden's ego, right? But, you know, to the chagrin of Biden, this issue isn't going to go away. In fact, it's getting much worse for him pretty quickly because Axios reports that Chuck Schumer is telling donors that he's OK with replacing Biden on the ticket. And after that report came out, a new report came out saying that the first Democratic senator publicly called for Joe Biden to drop out. So this is getting serious, even though it seemed like that door did close for a little bit between, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday. Things have changed again. Nancy Pelosi, George Clooney, and others have reopened that door, and they've given spineless Democrats who wish they were more brave another chance to put the country before their own careers and publicly call on Joe Biden to drop out. Now, odds are they could all call on him to drop out, and he still wouldn't listen. But you can at least look back at this moment and say, you know, I did everything I could to make sure we didn't hand the country to Donald Trump. So are they going to call on him? To drop out, I don't know. That's yet to be seen. But I will say that you just can't put the cat back in the bag. And the only chance that we have of beating Trump at this point is going with someone else, anyone else. But still, you know, I won't hold my breath. And I don't think you should either. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 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 <laughs> tree? They not like us. Tree? Tree? <laughs> you think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs>